What's going on guys, welcome back to Season 6 of my NHL 20 Detroit Red Wings Franchise Mode Series. As you can see, last year the Toronto Maple Leafs won the Stanley Cup. Unfortunately, they actually took us out. Now, I thought we had a really good team last year. I think the Maple Leafs were better than us in the regular season, and they ended up taking us out in the playoffs, but on paper, we had the better team. As you can see, we actually beat Buffalo there in the first round in five. I think they were like the second best team in the division. At least they're going to beat the Devils in the Eastern Conference Final, then the St. Louis Blues in the Stanley Cup Final. So, Back-to-back -back years where we did really well in the regular season, but unfortunately, disappointing playoff run. I think you guys might have saw there. Dry style, though, 15 points, 12 games is very solid. So, we're definitely going to make some shakeups. I'll show you guys kind of what the team is looking like right now. I saw some people saying we need a better, more defensive third-line center. Um, people were saying more defensive fourth line, you know, bring in some other guys. So, thing is, Valino's actually gone up to an 86, and you guys don't know, he's got really good defensive stats. 87 D awareness, 91 shot block, 94 stick check. 86 overall as well, making 2.2 million for the next two years is insane value. So we're definitely holding on to him. Uh, Tyler Bertuzzi there is up to an 87. So I feel like this team just keeps getting better and better. But we definitely are still gonna make a bit of a shakeup. I'm thinking maybe bring in some new guys to the fourth line, maybe a new defenseman, um, probably a new backup goalie. So tweak it a little bit, but I feel like the core should be good enough. Ovechkin down to 86, but still has an amazing shot. So he's at least like a second liner. His hands have really dropped off, I'm noticing, but that shot's still insane. And check this out, guys. Patrick Marlowe finally retires at the age of 44. Kind of crazy. Like, Joe Thornton was in the same draft as him, drafted first overall, and he just won the Jack Adams for best coach in the NHL. So that just kind of tells you how long Patrick Marlowe ended up playing. He actually ended up being on Edmonton, retired as an AHL player, but still 44 years old. That is very impressive. Ryan Getzlav there, also in the AHL. Plays whole career for the Ducks, so that's pretty cool. Joe Pavelski there on the Senators. Thomas Vanek actually came back, retired. So he ended up playing until 40. David Perron, TJ Oshie was also in the AHL. So obviously these guys drop off quite a bit. Dustin Brown, Keithy Handel, Dustin Bufflin, Ryan Suter, Andrew Ladd. I feel like Dustin Bufflin looks like probably just going to retire this year in real life. So he actually goes for an extra five years in game. I'm wondering if Henry Lundqvist finally retires. Okay, he does. And so does Marc-Andre Fleury, who actually finished one win shy of 600. Lundqvist, I don't know if you guys saw it, but he's actually down to 74 overall now. So I probably wasn't going to bring him back anyway. It's definitely disappointing we couldn't get him the Stanley Cup, but we definitely did our best. Ryan Miller, Craig Anderson, all these guys are just AHL goalies. Devin Dubnik actually went back to Edmonton. That's kind of cool. Halak there, Smith, Elliott Johnson, who are all kind of like career tandem goalies. And speaking of Dustin Bufflin, he's actually a coach now, so that's pretty cool and coach retirement. There should be some guys becoming scouts as well. So I think next year we're just gonna get to the draft. And we're at the draft now, guys. As you can see, we have five picks here. First, second, third, sixth, and seventh. So probably just gonna hold on to our picks, honestly. As well, too, I was looking at the draft class. I don't think it's anything crazy. Uh, last I remember, it was just like five medium league guys in the, in the first five, which is pretty much just standard. After that, nothing too crazy. We'll see here, though, if we can get any steals. So no guaranteed medium leads, unfortunately, later in the draft. Definitely just gonna have to hope for the best. We'll also check here for any gems and there's a couple low elite defensemen 223 and then the starter goalie so try and grab both of those and we're making our pick now guys at number 26 first though i just want to take a look at the top five and so let's see first overall 83 overall that's very good out of the draft looks like everyone else though was just mid 70s so pretty standard again this is actually probably a lower end draft really nothing too crazy aside from that first overall guy this guy could be medium top four michael payette scouts like um american defenseman there we have no idea. Um, this guy's got an even better chance though. Chad Coyle, 5'8", so he's offensive defenseman. Lacks size, but I mean, similar style there. P.K. Subban, four years out from being in the NHL. It's a bit of a wait. Let's check uh, Payet here. Four years out as well. Okay. Um, pretty much guaranteed a medium top four, so hopefully our scouts are right. And medium top six, that sucks. So the next pick here, guys, hopefully we can make up that last one. Obviously, looking for somebody a bit better than like a medium bomb six forward or medium top six defenseman. This guy here, low lead, 50-50. I do want to double check. Pick number 58, when is the first gem supposed to go? 142, okay, so we still have some time. Honestly, I'm leaning towards this Brett Reasoner guy. There's a small chance he's a medium elite player. Also, too, for his NHL ATA, it's only two years. So much style there, Thomas Vanek. Hopefully the scouts are right on this one. There we go, he actually is a medium top six, and he's 66 overall, so our second round pick there, better than the first rounder. And St. Louis here offering us Sunkfist and Irwin for a third round pick. I'm just going to say no, though. With this third round pick, I'm going to take that first gem. It's a little bit early, but we don't have a fourth rounder, so um, basically, rather than trying to trade for a pick or whatever, I'll just take him right now. So it's a starter here, goalie. He, he better have starter potential. He's a gem. Oh, medium elite. Let's go. That's awesome. Third round pick. And actually, guys, we didn't have a fourth or a fifth round pick. So it's a good thing we took that guy when we did, especially since he had that medium elite potential. Now, 
The other gem should still be available here. He is. Okay, so guaranteed low elite. Hopefully, decent rating out of the draft. 49 overall. Okay, so pretty low rating, but still not bad. And last pick in the draft here, guys. Pick number four in the seventh round. Basically, we're just taking a shot in the dark here. Russian goalie. Could be medium elite. Hopkins, though, also could be medium elite. We just got another medium elite goalie. Already have one. I'm leaning towards this Hopkins guy. Be like low elite. That'd be sick. Medium bottom six. Honestly, could be worse. So we're now the resign phase here, guys. As you can see at the bottom there, we have just under 23 million in cap space. Now, we have a couple big names to resign. Larkin and Raymond, both 90 plus. They're going to want big deals. Raymond's an RFA, but doesn't want an extension, so that's going to be interesting for sure. Ovechkin's down to an 86 overall. 38 years old. Still has top six potential. I think it was elite before, so I'm curious what he wants. $8 million. All right. So honestly, Ovi might just not fit into our team this year. Like, his hands kind of worry me. 77 endurance awesome shot still but for that price potentially to go even lower rating and we need to get larkin and raymond signed for sure i just don't know if we're gonna have the money to do that especially as well we have to get askarov signed our starting goaltender who actually dropped in rating by one which kind of sucks but still an 89 really solid so larkin 91 what's he gonna want 11 million um it doesn't get cheaper at all so and yeah like we might as well just give him what he wants let's try six years at 10.5 I feel like he says yes to that, and honestly, at 91 overall, not even a bad deal. And next we have Raymond, 22.90, six years, 8.9. Um, that's not bad, especially when you compare it to Lurkins. Can we get him cheaper at five? A little bit cheaper. Let's try 8.5 at five for 90 overall. Even though he's an RFA, that's still a really good deal. So next year, guys, are gonna try and sign Askarov. He wants one year there at 6.8. Um, doesn't really get that much more expensive. Kind of four to five years, a bit of a jump. Let's try four years. 6.75 i don't even know if we actually have enough money to do this you might just have to qualify them um because we're pretty low on cap right now so pretty much after those signings there of larkin and raymond i think all we can really sign is ahl guys comrie i'd like to try and get a better uh, backup goal unless he's cheap he is cheap which is what we need to so we'll actually keep comrie there uh the backup potential goalie we're not going to keep and so like i was saying um after that like we just don't have the cap space we actually still might have to trade away some guys so Anyone who wants like an NHL deal, it's just not going to happen. Perry here actually might make our NHL team. And he only wants 800k, so that works out really well. Um, Gru looks to probably be still an AHL player, but I'll get him signed there. And at 28 now, I'm just going to let him go. And this Reasoner guy here, already 66 overall. I'm not sure if he like is a junior player or not, but we'll sign him. He is, so actually, it won't matter. If he wasn't, he could have been in the AHL. So like I was saying, Ovechkin, we just don't have the cap space for. Plus, I'm worried he's going to regress and not be worth the $8 million. Hiroshi, I think we're gonna let go as well. Um, I think Smith, worst case, can take you know over his role on the AHL fourth line. Um, let's see, Benson even honestly could probably do it too. And we're getting all these guys really cheap. Find this Bohinsky guy here, 70 overall, low lead. Honestly, isn't too bad. Hargrave, 2370 for an AHL player, can't complain. And Peterson here, 2061, low top six. We'll get him locked up. Stillman, 56 at 21 is medium bomb six. I'm just gonna let him go. I don't think it's really worth the contract spot. Right wingers, this guy, same thing. I don't think it's worth a contract spot. Um, Hines, though, low elite, definitely gonna keep him. Looking at our defense here, all six are actually already locked up, which is really nice. It looks like Hicketts is actually gonna be the sixth defenseman this year, as Recky's actually dropped in rating. I don't know how. Low elite potential playing in the NHL, and he drops in rating. Like, go figure. Um, Lindstrom here, though, he's been a solid HLD man for us. Looks like it's about all he's gonna be. McIsaac. He still has not grown, so I'm not sure if he's just gonna bust for us, unfortunately. But obviously, hold out hope. Hopefully, he can have a really good year in the AHL. Something happens. Um, Domingue's here, definitely resigning. Low top 4D. Yakupov, 23 and 62. Uh, if he doesn't make something happen on this contract, definitely not get another one. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. So, let's hear what everyone says. Again, I think we actually might be short money, in which case we'll just qualify Askarov and Raymond, trade somebody away, try and get them locked up. But uh definitely you know right out of cap space and here we go guys our captain dylan larkin accepted the contract so that's awesome he's returning to the team benson accepted his deal could be a fourth liner comrie so we're getting him back as the backup um smith rejects wants to test free agency i mean i don't know about that one lindstrom accepts same with larson there domings Askarov rejects wants to test free agency you're an rfa dude uh finneganov accepts mcisaac accepts pere Gru, Johansson, Raymond or Jax wants to test free agency. I don't get these RFAs wanting to test free agency. Like, what the heck? Um, especially, like, these guys. I want to test, like, Hargrave wants to uh, test free agency. Um, we'll offer them all, like, an extra 100k or something and make sure we qualify the guys we want to keep. All right, guys. Yakupov guy, honestly, 23 years old, only a 62. He's probably never going to grow, so there's no point. 
Um, Smith, we're going to qualify. I doubt anyone makes an offer. Sam goes for Hargrave, um, especially this Bohinski. Like, no one, they're not going to make them more than a two-way offer, so 925k, in which case you can match. Like I was saying, Raymond Askarov, we're going to match, uh, sorry, qualify both. We have 13 million. It's going to cost about 15 to get these two guys locked up. So I can make them both offers again, but I feel like we're going to probably just have to wait till free agency, in which case they'll actually be more likely to accept. And look at our contracts here, guys. We really need to win this year because next year, Dreisaw gets a new contract. 94 overall. He's going to be going from like 8.5 to at least 12. As well, Shane Wright gets his first actual contract. He's going to be wanting at least like 9 million. So that's an extra, what, like 13 million got to come up with as well as, you know, getting Raymond still signed and Haskarov. So we really got to win the cup this year. And so I just sent a free agency, guys. We'll take a look and see who's available here. Obviously, we still have to get our two RFAs locked up. And this Chichu guy again, 90 overall wants 11 million. Aho wants 11 million, 92 overall at 26. Matthews is a free agent at 26 years old, exactly. A lot of people are saying like, that's how his contract works out and it could happen in real life. He's actually asking for less than his uh, previous deal. Holtz there, RFA, 9.3. Stutzel an 89 he ends up at and it's only 22 years old. I'm actually here asking for 9 on the open market at 30 years old. That's pretty aggressive. Raymond there asking for just under 9 at 90 overall actually isn't too bad. You got Josh Bailey wants 7.4. Phil Kessel, Goldman there, that was a hard guy. Apparently he couldn't make a contract happen with the Rangers. Really wish uh, we didn't make that trade now looking back, but oh well. Everly, Lundell, Johansson, Yolhevi. Wow. So Wheeler's 81 overall, still looking for a deal at $5 million. That's Actually, his stats are all good except for skating and defense. And physical somehow dropped a lot, even though he's still a 65 to 25. But looking through here, tons, tons, tons of free agents. This this might be one of the best yet. I'm not sure if it's as good as a couple years ago, but a pretty crazy free agency. This Dayton guy, so he was actually drafted like two, pick, two picks after Askarov. 86 overall, so our pick was definitely the better one. Georgia, Leonard, Skinner. Good amount of goalies here available as well. And right now, guys, we're looking at two-way players with decent potential. Bohinski here is actually our guy. We have a qualifying offer on. Yakubov, we let go. This guy, um, Toscast, I don't know. 1961 low lead. Just going to try and get him. Seems like a decent player to get for free. You also get some medium top six. 23 years old, 76 overall. Now, now they're all RFAs. So chances are all these teams are going to match. But I feel like we just have to make an offer because maybe they're at the contract limit. Just some way we're able to get them for free. Um, I noticed actually Noel Gunler's available, so 2279, medium top six. I actually might make him like a legit offer here. I'm thinking like one year. Max, we have to like give up no picks, 1.225. Could grow to like an 80 something. And be a pretty solid player we just add for free. And next year, guys, we're gonna try and get both Raymond and Askarov locked up. So Raymond here wants just under nine for seven years. A lot from 8.5. So I could just $5 million left, but you also have to think too, if you sign a guy, like there's already somebody getting counted for a million. So we actually have like a couple more million than that, which means we'd have about 7 million here for Askarov, which is right around what he wants. So it's gonna be close. Two years, 7.2. And that looks to be the sweet spot. Um, we could tr Honestly, he might take four years at 7 million. If not, we'll come back. Um, do 7 million for two years. Hopefully, both those guys say yes. A decent trade just went down. Calgary trade and Hamnick, a third and a fourth to Florida for Nassan, a second and a third. And right now, we're just waiting to hear back from those two big RFAs. And this guy here, Sawgas, accepted our offer, which is awesome. He had the low lead potential. Bedner, Fox for two thirds. Honestly, I was thinking about maybe making the one medium lead guy who's a uh, 60 overall now, the backup in the AHL. We're getting two third rounders back. Um. I feel like I'm actually, um, I'm going to take that trade. I think that's a decent trade for us. Bedner too, wasn't really growing too much. Gunler's accepted our offer as of now. Um, this guy here decided to just stay with the Devils. This guy stays with the Rangers. That's fine. I kind of figured that since those guys, we just offered the max two-way. And Toronto here trades Andrew Shaw on a third of Vancouver for Hoglander and a Seabrook. Hoglander's still only a 77. And Askarov rejects um, on the contract duration. Okay, I'll just give him the two years. Raymond rejects as well. Are you kidding me? So like I was saying, guys, he's going to offer Askarov $7 million here for two years. I think he'll say yes to that. It's pretty much exactly what he wants. Now, Raymond, I don't know, maybe try like 8.6. I feel like we're pretty close. We're giving him all the years he wants. Like He's not losing out on a lot of money here at all. And unfortunately, St. Louis actually matched our offer to Noel Gundler, which I'm kind of surprised. I didn't think they would, but obviously it makes sense because they should have. I just didn't think they would. And come on, Ottawa gets Gusev Duran. And a third round pick for Rista Linen, who's on that team now. Morin and two fourths. That's a pretty major trade. Rista Linen 88, Duran there 86, as well as Gusev's in 86. Um, 
that's actually pretty nuts. One of the bigger trades I've actually seen in franchise. Come on. Please, one of them sign with us. Are you kidding me? Askarov decided to sign with their team but no longer have cap space, which means Raymond did accept our offer. So we probably are like a couple million dollars short, which means we gotta make a trade. So right now, guys, make a trade with Ottawa again. This is to save some cap. Only about one and a half million, but that should be enough to get Askarov signed. Offering up Morrissey, who we actually just got 29 years old, A6 overall, top four D-man there, making 6.2 for four more years. Brandstrom making 4.6 for two more years. 24 years old, so a bit younger. 84 overall, he's also lower rated, but has mediumly potential, so could actually end up growing to be even past Morrissey. Now, I think the value was about equal. Thing is, Branch was on the block, so they want Morrissey. I'm actually adding a third round pick, too, just to hopefully smooth it out, make this trade happen. I'm noticing, too, they just got Duran and Gusev, and now they have both of them on the block, plus Zabinijad apparently returned to Ottawa. That's kind of cool. Um, value's on our side by a little bit. We'll see what they say. Trade rejected. Okay, so I thought that would probably happen just because Branch was on the block. We have two-thirds. I'm willing to go up a second round pick next year. Trade still rejected. Sweeten the value just a touch, though. Um, we have two fifths. Let's try adding a fifth rounder there. All right, apparently the fifth is not enough. Let's do um, second, a fourth, and a seventh. They gotta say yes. There we go. Also, guys, I wanted to show you Branch some stats here. Kind of similar to Jake Bean. His hands are insane. 99 deking, 92 hand eye, 94 passing and puck control. So him and Bean there on the left side, like both just sick hands. Also, when I was looking for defensemen, I noticed this. Dalene's up to a 96 overall right now at 24 years old. Only making 8.8 .8 million. Literally like the next Bob Yor. 70 points there. He is absolutely insane. Like 98 D awareness. Are you kidding me? I'm wondering actually if he's as high rated as McDavid. Because then he would just be tied to the highest rated player in the game. Which is kind of insane. But honestly not too far off. Yeah, McDavid's a 96 as well. So no one's quite able to get to 97. Maybe Darlene will do it. And so right now guys are going to make Askarov that same offer. $7 million two years. Last time he said yes, we just down the money. So this time should work. And there we go. Askarov did accept our offer. So I feel like at this point we have no money. Lawton, um, third and fourth for a third. I'm just going to say no to that. I'm going to check here because I would like to add one more fourth line forward. We're actually short one, I think. We have a million dollars right on. So let's check here. Affordable players. There's a 79 Hiroshi who we actually let go. Is the highest rated, it looks like. Um, Yanmark, 80 overall. What's his? I want somebody with like four star defense. Three star. I feel like there's not gonna be too many good defensive guys. So I just came across Sokolov, guys. 23 years old, 78 overall. Roll their fourth line forward. Check out his defensive stats. Only has 83 defense awareness, but 88 shot block and 93 stick check. I just noticed though his skating is terrible. It's 75, but 98 strength. 93 aggressiveness, 93 body check, so he's pretty strong. This is a weird player. I'm I'm willing to take a chance on him. As a fourth line forward, he's not the fastest, but he's just strong, great defensive stats. Actually, looks like I can't offer more than 1,015,000, so hopefully they don't match it. And so Sokolov digs out their offer. We just got to wait now and see if LA matches it or not. Graves and Houdon for a second and a fifth. Um, Houdon could be like a decent fourth liner. Let's see a look, take a look at the ratings here. They want a second round pick. Uh, Houdon's a 79. Mm, honestly, for a second round, I'd rather just hold on to our pick. And as it turns out, LA did match our offer sheet for Sokolov, so that sucks. And like I was saying, guys, looking for an upgrade for our fourth line. Frederick here on Boston is a pretty solid fourth liner, I think. 80 overall, but you look at his stats. 87 shot block, 91 stick check. Really good skating there. 92 balance, high 80s for the speed. Physical is insane. 92 aggressiveness and strength. 90 body check. Rest of those stats aren't too great, but definitely kind of like an energy guy, which I think we maybe need. Everyone in the comments is saying we need more of like a balance of players as opposed to just like all offensive guys. So Kufner here just in the AHL, but saying that overall, he's not too bad. Makes this trade happen. Jane's here, 22, 62, low top six. Probably not going to turn out into anything, but they want him, has some value. And it's on our side too, so maybe we'll only have to add like a fifth if they say no. And they actually said yes. So there we go. I think the team should be good for this year. Hopefully the changes we made is enough to, you know, push us over the top. And a kind of cool trade just went down, guys. Allen fell here getting traded by Tampa Bay to Seattle in exchange for Derek Steffen and two third round picks. Seattle had so many goalies and then they just trade them all away. So kind of funny they're actually having to trade for one now. And check this out. Tampa Bay making another huge trade, getting Cam Atkinson and Gabe Carlson from the Columbus Blue Jackets in exchange for a first and second round pick. So Tampa Bay stocking up. And the Pittsburgh Penguins just traded Jake Gensel and Mackenzie Weger to Colorado for Jared Spurgeon in two seconds. Really surprised to see Pittsburgh trading Gensel, but I'm guessing it's kind of like time for their rebuild. And looking at the captaincy now, guys, with Ovi gone, we had an extra letter to give. So obviously Lurkin still wearing the C, Dreisaitl with one of the A's, and I actually gave the other one to Seth Jones just 
best defenseman on the team. Figured it made sense. And check this out, guys. After we traded Josh Morrissey to Ottawa, they just traded him to Chicago, along with a third and two fifths for two prospects there and a first rounder. So I think that's Morrissey's fourth team now in like six months or something. Never even actually played a game for Ottawa. And we're actually at the preseason now, so I'll show you guys the lines. Team stats there, obviously, still champion. We're still stacked. It's just we need to get through this playoff soon. Like, we're getting so unlucky. So Raymond there on the first line now with Dreisel on right. I figured... Right has franchise potential. We should put him on the first line opposed to the second. That way it just gives him all the opportunity in the world to grow because he could end up being like a 95 for us if we, you know, we give him the minutes, he plays well. And, and I feel like playing with Dreisel and Raymond, that definitely could be the case. Second line here, you got Bertuzzi, Larkins, Dina. So it's actually like an original Detroit line. Third line's Mantha, Valino, and Krebs. So really solid third line. I'm hoping Krebs here, again, third line Mantha opposed to the fourth line can grow. He's got good stats, uh, good playmaker. Felino and Mantha, I think, you know, he should be actually be able to do pretty good. And then fourth line here is just kind of like our crying line. Rasmussen, Pere, and Frederick. They're getting minus one, but it's whatever. As you can see, they're all power forwards. Frederick 6'2", Pere 6'3", Rasmussen 6'6". They're also all centers, so any of them can take the face-off draw. They're pretty much identical face-off stats. All good physical stats, decent defensive stats, so we'll see how that goes. Defense here, Bean and Jones actually get plus three on the top pair. Cider Branch jump plus one, and then Hicketts and Karonic actually get a plus three as well. So we're getting some big chemistry boost there on the defense. Goalies, of course, still we have Askarov as the starter, Comrie backing him up. Quick look here at the special teams. First power player gets a plus three, right, Larkin, Dreisel, Zadina Jones. Second one there gets a plus one. Obviously, power play is sick. Format power play there is pretty solid. Penalty kill, we actually get plus five still. Hicketts is on the D, but I think he should do fine playing with Jones there. And then three man penalty kill, we're getting zeros. A lot of times we're getting negatives, so. I'm happy with the zeros there. And looking at the AHL team next, we got Benson, Grew, and Gunther on the first line. Grew here is a 69 at 23, which is kind of low, so hopefully playing on the first line, he'll actually start to grow a bit, can maybe actually be an NHL player for us. Same goes for Gunther, I'm hoping he grows a ton. Giovanni Smith there is kind of buried at 79 on the second line, but hopefully he can just help out this AHL team, who looks okay, maybe we'll make the playoffs, maybe not. McIsaac, Setkov on the top pair, getting plus one. Same with the second pair. Um, special teams here is actually not the greatest for chemistry. You can see zero, zero. Plus ones at least for the penalty kill and three man zeros, but um, what are you gonna do? Also, too, I found it strange, but uh, the defense we had last year on the NHL team, we drafted him. So he made the team out of like the draft, and then this year he didn't make the team. He actually got sent down to juniors. So I thought it was kind of funny. Uh, I'll show you guys Recky here, 78 overall, low elite, played in the NHL last year, and right now he's playing for the Kitchener Rangers. So I don't know. Imagine that. Like you play an entire season, 82 games in the NHL, and you get sent back to junior. I'm not even sure if you can do that, but uh, the junior thing is kind of messed up right now, so hopefully he just plays well there and comes back as like an 80 and makes a team next year. So take a look here at our stats, offense, defense, goal tenure ratings. I feel like we should still have close to 100 offense, 97, 90 defense, 87 goal tending. So again, team stats is champion. We got to be one of the best teams in the NHL. We just got to hope the Sims good to us. All right, guys, we're just going to offer the Edmonton Oilers. I'm going to reject it. That's not important. I want to show you guys this. We're 9-0 right now to start the NHL season. Just insane. I'm hoping I don't jinx it here with Washington. 10-0 to start the year. So looking good so far. And so rounding December here, guys, the record of 25-8-2, which is pretty good. But when you think the fact that we started out 10-0, it means we went 15-8-2 after that, which is okay. 52 points, though. Like, we can't complain. Canadians are right in our tail, too, at 50. So... Again, the Atlantic Division just seems to be stacked. So after we traded Josh Morrissey to Ottawa, they flipped him, and now they're flipping Jonathan Durand to Arizona for Chicker in a second and a fourth, so I'm not sure what they're doing over there, but they're making moves. And look at this. Dallas just trades longtime captain Jamie Benn with a third-round pick for Nate Schmidt and Joel Armia. I mean, he's still 84 overall. I'm guessing he's still making the $8 million because that return's not very great. And Minnesota just traded Kevin Fiala and Shaw here, who's an 81, for a second round pick. Nick Backstrom was down to an 80, and Grunstrom was an 82. So uh, a lot of activity right now as we head towards the trade deadline. And look at this, guys. Boston just offered us Brad Marchand and Kempney for Rasmussen and Finneganov. Now, I saw Marchand's potential. It's AHL. He's probably like a 78 or something. And he's a 79. Also, put us over the lead max. I'm sorry, Caps. I'm not sure how that was even going to go through in the first place. And after getting Kevin Fiala from Minnesota, LA just flipped him to Dallas along with the second round pick uh, for Essel and Dallas. Still an 84 and a 6. So, um, pretty decent trade there. Like, two guys 84. But Dallas, they also get a second rounder. Winnipeg just got Adam Larson for Stone and Ranger. Um, not quite Taylor Hall, I'm not going to lie. So, we got a couple games here before the deadline. I believe we're still first in the division. Unfortunately, though, just not as big a lead as I thought we'd have. Hayden Fleury and Ferraro to Arizona for DeBrusque in a fifth. So, pretty big trade too. San Jose and DeBrusque there is an 85. We should be able to beat Edmonton here. They're a good team as well, but we're a little bit better. 
Boston just traded Hag in two seconds for Hartman, a third and a fourth. Again, lots of activity. We actually lose Edmonton 6-3, so we just got beat by or passed by the Lightning. They have 84 points. It did say they had one less game played, and I think we're tied with Montreal, also 83 points. So we had a huge lead there to start, 10-0, although I think not as big as it should have been. And like the top three teams in the Atlantic are insane. Maple Leafs, I don't know what happened to them, but they have 56 right now and 63, so a big drop off. Even the Sabres, too, aren't doing quite as good as like the other two there, so... Atlanta Division is just stacked. Dry Saddle, 75 points right now in 62 games, having an unreal year. Every now, guys, I'm trying to make a trade with San Jose just to get a better backup goalie in Martin Jones. Still an 82 overall here at 35 years old. Have them retaining 50%, offering up Pressburg, 22, 62, low top four. Just a pretty average prospect, but the value is about equal. Maybe even a bit on our side, which it needs to be. To hopefully, have them retain 50%, even though at the deadline shouldn't matter too much. We'll see what they say. Trade acceptance. There we go. And Kevin Fiala here is again on the move. Dallas trades him and Radulov to Philadelphia for Barry and Giroux. So kind of an insane return, actually. Tyson Barry, Claude Giroux. They're lower rated now at 83 and 84, but still some big names there. And we're at the end of the season now, guys. We finished one win below 50, which kind of sucks. 49, 27, and 6. Actually lost the division there to the Canadians by two points. So the one win. After the deadline, we we're actually pretty average, like maybe just above 500. Also, two as you might have saw there, Dry Saddle, 93 points in 82 games, so solid season for him. The Lightning and the Sabres also look to be in the playoffs in the Atlantic, so take a look here and see how everybody did. I know Dry Saddle is on a contract year. 93 points, though, like, I don't know, maybe we can get him for 11 million or something. Shane Wright's also on a contract year, 75, up to a 90 overall, 25 goals, 50 assists, so worked out pretty nice for him. He's going to get paid for sure. Larkin, 69. Pretty nice, I don't know, for second line center. Raymond, 63, would have hoped for a bit better. Playing on that top line, Dry on the right. Jones there, Zadina, Valino. Valino at 50 as a third line center, that's actually really good. Bean there, Mantha, Bertuzzi. So, Bertuzzi at 42, he went up to 87. I thought, honestly, he'd have at least 50 again. Krebs there, not too bad, playing third line. Didn't grow at all, though. Fourth line there, Rasmussen at 27. Frederick, 17. Perret, 15. So, not too, too bad. Uh, check goaltending stats here. See how Askarov did. Pretty good record. 0.899 though. Like not even a 0.9 is a bit worrisome. 2.91 as well. He had worse goals against than like Martin Jones and Comrie. So I don't know what's up with that. Like his record's better. So we're winning more with him. But I don't know why his save percentage isn't that good. Also want to take a look at the AHL team. Benson at 76. Unfortunately, he's 27. He's done growing. Smith, 54. Still a 79. Gunther, 53. That's pretty solid. 76 overall. I would have hoped he did a bit better than that, but honestly, uh, it's not too terrible, especially considering his rating and everything. Take a look here at the entire NHL. Siri finished, or Dreisel, I guess, finished. Matthews, 99 points on the Pittsburgh Penguins. That's where he signed. Are you kidding me? Wow. Cole Perfetti, 97. I actually noticed he's up to a 91 now. He's sick. McKinnon, 94. Dreisel was fourth. All right. Sagan, Holtz, also on Pittsburgh. Penguins aren't looking too bad here in this rebuild. Sprong, Barzell. I don't know if it's too strong, but it really jumped up, up to an 89. Also, too, if you guys are wondering, um, goals here, actually, this is going to make it take way longer. I noticed um, Ovechkin signed with the Senators, and he definitely did decline a bit. You can see he only had 21 goals this year. Still an 86, but I feel like the 8 million we saved was definitely worth it. And looking at the league now, Montreal actually won the Eastern Conference there with 106 points, so we're probably a really good second place team in the division, and <laughs> we finished third in the entire league and second in our division. Only, as well, two wins behind Anaheim, so that's kind of nuts. Only five teams, 100-plus points. Pittsburgh's a bit scary, I think. We run into them uh, later in the playoffs. Somebody else should be in the... Dallas squeaks in as the 18th team. Are you kidding me? I think, too, I noticed Seattle was bad again. I don't know. Are they last again? I think I missed them. There they are. They're 27th, and Boston's actually last place in the league. That's kind of interesting. And the first round of the playoffs, guys, are up against the Lightning, who are still stacked. They got Atkinson, Stamkos, and Kucherov on the first line. Second line there, you got Taylor Radish, Tim Stutzel, and Braden Point. Yanni Gord, Derek Stefan, Casey Zekas on the third with Pat Shreddy, Zach, and Vitron on the fourth. So obviously our forward group's a lot better. Like we have more high-end players, better depth, but they're still pretty good for computer team. Heaven Search has a very solid top pair. Then they have Foot, Cholowski, Cheka, and Carlson. So they definitely, like they're top heavy for sure on defense. Hopefully they can take advantage of that. And then goaltending, Vasilevsky still an 89 there at 30 years old. Jack Campbell, not too bad of a backup, but I mean, on paper, we're better. So they are a good team. They're still stacked in terms of the computer teams. We should beat them. So we'll see what happens here. Obviously, even if whether or not we like beat them, lose in the first round, it doesn't matter unless we win the Stanley Cup. That's the, you know, the ultimate goal here. First five years, we got unlucky. Maybe these next five years, we had dynasty. So here we go. First period, first game. Bertuzzi, right score. Nothing in the second. Come on, hold on here, boys. 
<laughs> Barely. Raymond scores. They get two goals for defensemen. Luckily, they hold on by one. So game number two here, forgot to mention, the first two games are at home. And a lot of scoring there on the first. We're up 3-2. Raymond Mantha, dry saddle. Get another one there from Mantha. Wow. And Mantha completes the hat trick and Zadina gets two. So huge game from Mantha. Game number two, give us the 2-0 uh, series lead. So game three here in Tampa Bay. 1-1 one, one after one. Patrick Valino. And they get one from Stammer. We've got to answer back here in the third. And there we go. Bertuzzi, come on, get an OT hero. We're actually out shooting them by quite a bit. Fortunately, Gord there gets the uh, OT for them. But still, forced OT. So our first loss, close one. If we can get this second game in Tampa, uh, come home up 3-1, to one, I feel like we have a very good chance to take this series in five. So, come on. Last game could have went either way. I didn't, I didn't even realize. We won 7-2 that second game. That's huge. Here we go. Game four. Nothing in the first. There we go, Larkin, Cider, Raymond, 3-1 lead. Hey, okay, hold on there, Larkin gets another 4-2 win. So, exactly what wanted to happen, 3-1 lead, heading home for game number five. We gotta take this now in Hockey Town and make it to round two. I'm actually thinking, I don't think we've made it past round two in the playoffs so far in this franchise, which is kind of insane. Or, do we make it, like, I don't think we made it to conference final yet, so hopefully this is our year. Game's five here, Kucherov for them. Oh, come on, we can't get shut out. Are you kidding me? All right, so game number six here. We gotta win one of these next two. First period, there we go. Or it's actually tied to two. Atkinson, surge share for them. Dry Slaughter's reason for us. Nothing in the second. Are you kidding me? I feel like I might've gotten a bit overconfident there thinking we'd have it in five, but I mean, all three of their wins have been one goal wins. Three, two OT, one nothing, and then three, two. Like we have to, we have to take this. Game seven, back at home. Let's go, boys. Are you kidding me? We need a big second period. Outshot 17 to 5. Come on. We pull within one. Please, somebody find a way. Wow. First round exit. <sighs> I can't believe this. Also, too, as you can see, Tampa Bay won the Stanley Cup. So, two years in a row, we actually lost to the eventual Stanley Cup winner. I don't know. Like, like I was saying, the Atlantic Division stacked. I think we're just getting super unlucky. Like, our team is the best team on paper. They're just not making it happen in the playoffs. I don't know why. Bertuzzi there, eight points in seven games. Like, I'm trying to figure out, is it our goalie? Because Askarov really didn't have the greatest stats. I'm, I'm going to take a look at his playoff stats, actually, because I want to see... I mean, literally until the last game, though, like I was saying, it was all one-goal losses. Like, it could have went either way. I mean, those stats aren't terrible. Like, you definitely at least can get out of the first round with those stats. Uh, it's just unfortunate. So take a look at the playoff tree, see how Tampa Bay did after taking us out. So they actually beat Montreal in seven. Wow, Carolina in seven, and then the Ducks in seven. They played 28 games, like the max you can play in the playoffs. So respect to that. Also to Tampa Bay, Anaheim, kind of cool, you know, Cali versus Florida there in the Stanley Cup final. I just, I don't know what's going on, guys. Like, we tried switching it up, got more of like a grind fourth line there. I don't know, Brian, a veteran backup, but I guess it really only matters for the regular season. I just don't know what to do. So, Matthews there with the Art Ross and the Hart. Carr, James Norris, one of the three or four years now. Pretty nuts. Brazil, Lady Bing, Holloway there with the Calder. He's actually drafted in 2020, so I guess he's just making it into the NHL right now. Con Smythe goes to Kucherov. Riddick there at the Vesna, wow. Gibson got the William Jennings though. Dylan, Bill Masterton, he actually won it a few years ago because Seattle's still bad. Um, San Jose's coach got the Jack Adams. Barkov with the Selkie for the third straight year. Matthews also got Ted Lindsay. And then Zegers there, Maurice Richard. So I think like those college players, how I make them, their shooting stats are a bit better or something. So Calder Cup, San Antonio Rampage. I don't even think we made the playoffs looking through the team awards. Individual awards, Gustin most points. Kovachuk MVP, I don't even think he'd still be playing. That's kind of hilarious. This Gumba guy, most goals, uh, Kubitschek, I was saying rookie, Ryan, best defenseman, Allen, best goalie, Ellis, MVP though, the playoffs, Gustafson, sportsmanship, current community involvement, Allen also had lower schools again. So, again guys, we're going to have to figure something out here, because like, this team, we do well in the playoff, or the regular season, sorry, we're always first, second in the division, 100 plus points, and then can't get by round two of the playoffs. Like, it's actually insane. I, I don't know what to do. I'm um, also too, I was looking at the drafts, uh, no like franchise players or anything like that, just five elite guys at the top, but there are a couple elite goalies that should go later, we can definitely get. Look at that, Patrick Kane retires at 36, 1472 points in, four, in 1395 games played, 85 overall still as well, so he could have kept playing, 
Retires on top. He got his three cups. So that's pretty nuts. Malkin there. Also at over a point per game. Eric Stoll. Kovachuk actually retires now. Jonathan Taze. So him and Kane retire at the same time, but Taze is actually on the Canucks. Their AHL team, to be more exact. Same with Kovachuk and Eric Stoll. So, I mean, they're not too high rate anymore, but the fact that all three of those guys are on the Canucks AHL team, that's kind of sick. Paul Stastny there retires. Blake Wheeler. Look at all these guys. All 1,000 games play. Like, most of these guys are, you know, legit NHL. There's lots of Hall of Famers here. Like, I feel like Marchand probably ends it up, ends up in the Hall if he keeps it up. Shea Weber, Jonathan Taze for sure. I mean, Eric Stahl, Kane, Malkin. Like, there's some big time Hall of Famers here. Brian Little, Giordano retires, Tyler Bozak, Alex Edler, Jake Muzzin. Like, tons of guys who, I wouldn't say are in the prime, but they're still like everyday NHLers right now, all retiring at this point, which is kind of nuts. Check goalies here. Pecorino retires, Corey Crawford, James Reimer, Cam Talbot, Koskin in there. So again, yeah, a lot of just, you know, regular NHLers starting to retire now. And Mark Giordano actually just became a coach, which is pretty cool. And Ilya Kolchuk became a scout. If he's a scout we need, I'm definitely going to consider hiring him. So that's going to be it, though, guys, for this episode. Again, I thought we made enough changes to shake this team up and, you know, hopefully go deep in the playoffs. But apparently we have to actually, like, make a real change to this team because... We're just not performing in the playoffs. Maybe I'll find someone that just doesn't have good poise. Dreisel is not one extended. I'm going to do everything I can to get him extended because that's a huge loss if we can't keep him. Right there, we're obviously going to have to keep, I don't know, like something's going to have to give. We're going to have to make a trade. Volino's up to an 87 now, making 2.2. That is such a good contract for us. And it's only going to last one more year. So, like, I say it almost every year, how, like, that's our window to win, but, like, I don't know, like, it's gonna keep getting tougher and tougher. We gotta win this cup soon. So, that's gonna be it, guys, for this episode. Again, any suggestions you have, leave them in the comments section. Other than that, thank you, as always, for watching. If you did enjoy it, leave a thumbs up. Have a nice day, guys. Goodbye.